Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Mortgage Musketeer, where today we are going to be talking about manufactured homes. All right, if you are listing a manufactured home, if you're thinking about selling a manufactured home, if you are especially thinking about buying a manufactured home, these are the things that you need to know right away and either before or after this video, watch another video that I did all about buying or selling manufactured homes because it covers some other aspects of it. What I'm covering today are the upfront items that I deal with every single time with like just annoying consistency, the questions I have to ask or the things I need to point out in order for people to understand how to buy or sell a manufactured home. This is critical. This is for realtors and this is for buyers and this is for sellers. Okay, applies to all of you so you understand the challenges of a manufactured home and how to turn them not into challenges but a simple process because buying a manufactured home is not difficult. What buying a manufactured home becomes difficult because people don't understand them. Okay, so first thing a manufactured home is and forever will be a manufactured home. Something that starts as a double wide will always and forever into perpetuity be a manufactured home. If you tear down the manufactured home and leave the closet and build around it and it looks like a beautiful Taj Mahal, it is still a manufactured home because the chain of title will always and forever bring it back to its origination as a manufactured home. I hear it all the time. Are you I ask the question, are you buying a single family home or a manufactured home? And inevitably, they say with excitement, it's a manufactured home, but it's been converted to real property. My response is always, congratulations. It now qualifies. A manufactured home will not qualify unless it has been converted to real property. What does that mean? Okay, when a manufactured home is brought from the lot and put on a home, a manufactured double wide, when it's put on a lot, it is a vehicle. It has a vehicle title. In order to convert it to real property, that vehicle title has to be turned into the DMV and then title has to convert it to real property. Okay, that is simply to make it eligible to be financed. It doesn't turn it into magically, it's like you can't turn lead into gold. You cannot turn a manufactured home into anything other than a manufactured home. That is simply a characteristic of its deed or title. It has been converted to real property because it is now fixed and firm and now this is part of the land and it exists, okay? As opposed to a vehicle where, yeah, I mean, you could technically take a double wide and lift it and move it somewhere else, okay? So by converting it to real property, there it is, there it sits, that is its home, okay? And in order to be eligible for financing, it must be converted. If it is not currently converted when we begin the lending process, it will be, it must be converted before it can close. Usually we take care of that behind the scenes so people don't necessarily see it, but understand it. Being real property just saves money. We don't have to convert it and it saves time. We don't have to convert it. All right, but it's still a manufactured home, which is awesome, right? So if it has been converted, great. That's one less thing that we have to do. The other thing that I hear all the time is, but it's been, it's on permanent foundation. It's a manufactured home, but it's on permanent foundation. Like that makes all the difference in the world. Like it's no longer manufactured home. Again, my response is congratulations. It makes it eligible. If a manufactured home is not on a permanent foundation, it is not eligible. So then it would have to be put on a permanent foundation or made permanent foundation. Now, that comes into play because every single manufactured home, as long as you're doing some type of government loan, typically, just let's talk specifically about FHA. As long as it's an FHA loan, which the majority of people buying a manufactured home tend to do it with a uh, FHA loan, it has to have an engineer report. An engineer has to come out to the home, look underneath the home, and ensure that it meets HUD guidelines. And then they have to produce an engineer certificate. That costs money. Going back to converting real property, that costs money too, about 300 bucks, right? For the engineer report, I've seen it 
on average between 450 and 550 to go out there and, and, and verify. Now, when they look at this, if it does not meet HUD guidelines, then it has to meet HUD guidelines, which means whatever the defect is, whatever is missing, is gonna have to be corrected. Now, what is the most common thing that everybody could look at before they even sell a manufactured home that they could save tons of time and money? It's called dry stacking. So, being on a permanent foundation doesn't mean it's like on a flat slab. Most of the time, they're on a crawl space, and when they're set, they're on um, pillars, and most of the time it's uh, um, cement, the um, cinder blocks, right? So the cinder blocks. Now, those cinder blocks, in order to meet HUD guidelines, have to be coated with cement all around it, okay? I call it frosting because it's the easiest way to, to picture it. You have to frost those pillars, you know, and you, basically, you know, a, a square pillar, you stack the cinder blocks and then the house sits on top of the pillar. It, that stacked cinder block has to be coated. If it is not, it is called dry stacked. All right, and when the engineer goes out there to look at it, they'll say, hey, it's, they'll take a picture of it and it's dry stacked, all right? The other thing is, does it have a vapor barrier, okay? You can't look up underneath and look underneath the, you know, at the, at the actual floor and look up and find a vapor barrier. Vapor barrier's on the ground. If you don't have a vapor barrier on the ground, you need a vapor barrier, all right? The other thing is, is it tied down? So a manufactured home has to be tied down in a very specific way. Okay, with, with tie down. So it has to tie it down to the ground, all right, in order to meet HUD guidelines. Now, an engineer certificate can be done just once. You don't need a new one. You just need one that shows that it meets HUD guidelines. So if you ever buy or sell this and you have an engineer certificate, hold on to it like gold because if you ever go to sell it again, here you go, boom. Beautiful. It saves time and money because inevitably what happens is because it costs 400 to 500 something dollars, we typically don't order it out front because what happens if something happens before that? Because that's four, you know, four to five hundred dollars out of somebody's pocket. So normally it comes out of underwriting. We're at a certain point and we realize, okay, hey, we need this. Also, the appraiser needs a copy of the engineer certificate, so that creates an issue there too because it'll come back subject to completion, but it's not one that's going to cost money to send them back out again. We just have to provide the engineer certificate and they'll make the correction. All right, so these are things that are critical to know it has to be done. Now, having said that, if you are a realtor and you're listing a property, uh, a manufactured home, you should be looking underneath in that crawl space when you are listing it and you should tell that seller, hey, these are dry stack pillars, you need to frost them. Get it done, okay? You need to say, hey, does it have a vapor barrier? No, it doesn't, you need to get a vapor barrier. Hey, is it tied down? right? You need to get it tied down, right? And, and they can get, get the, you know, the tie downs, and everything else. It's a very specific thing. And, you know, you can actually hire companies to do that for you because if it isn't done, it can't be sold unless it is done. So what I see all the time is people will list a manufactured home and then in process, we have to fix everything instead of being proactive going, Hey, it's just like if you were staging a home, right? Would you, you know, let it be all cluttered and nastified, or would you make sure that they clean it up and get it to a point where it's sellable? Well, a lot of times we list manufactured homes and say, Jesus, take the wheel. All right. And hopefully somebody knows what they're doing when they actually go to do the loan. Cause most people don't know what the heck they're doing when they're dealing with manufactured home and then they get blindsided. And that's why these things drag out forever is because you have to correct things in order to make it financeable. Okay. All right. Now, same thing with converting to real property. If you're listing the home, show me the deed or title. Show me that it's been converted to real property. If it has not, then they need to go get it because the other thing that drags on is a lot of times that vehicle title, who knows where it is? And if it was bought and sold through cash transactions where this wasn't required, you might have to go back a seller or two in order to find that. So critical that you know that up front. Get the deed or title and look underneath. Convert it to real property. And then also make sure that it meets if they have an engineer certificate or if it was sold, the last person, if they got an FHA loan, somebody somewhere has that engineer certificate. You don't need a new one. Go hunt it down. Go get it. And then you have the documentation and you're set. All right. Okay. Now, having said those items, and you can tell I'm passionate about because it, it happens all the time. The other thing, if you are buying the manufactured home before you even think about making an offer. You went to this home, you're with your wife, you've got a new baby, you're looking at this manufactured home and a lot of them are really nice, right? And you're looking at this going, I can see us living here forever and raising our kids and I'm really excited about this. Honey, this is our dream home, we're gonna buy this home. Yes, but what you don't know is that 
Insurance on a manufactured home is oftentimes more expensive than on a regular single family home. Manufactured homes appreciate as a house similar to what a regular single family house would do. So if you're looking at it as a house or a home, great. Insurance companies look at it as a depreciating asset. They still look at it kind of like a vehicle. So it is more expensive to insure a manufactured home. So what happens most of the time is people put an offer in on the house and then they go and try and get homeowner insurance and they are shocked, right? Knowing this, when somebody tells me it's a manufactured home, like let's say for instance, it was a $100,000 home. You know, I can say hundred grand, a hundred thousand dollars for, I'm sorry, hundred dollars a month for homeowner insurance, a hundred thousand dollar manufactured home. I'm putting in there 130 to 140 easy. Now, if it's in a place, cause a lot of times manufactured homes are away in the rural and they're, they're away from, um, uh, fire departments, sometimes it can be in a, um, a fire area that is too far away or it's, it, it makes it more expensive because the fire departments can't get there as fast. So that makes it even more. I've seen a hundred thousand dollar manufactured homes that require 180 to $200 a month in, in homeowners insurance. And if this manufactured home is in a flood zone, okay, I'm not even going to talk about that. I, I've done them, right? expensive. Know it up front. Before you put an offer on the house, you can call an insurance agent and say, hey, I'm looking to buy 123 Main Street and I'm wondering if, you know, what is the homeowner insurance going to cost me on that? Get a quote before you put an offer in and then understand it. And if you're still okay with it, then great. Okay. But now the loan officer has that actual number that they can plug in to make sure you still qualify. All right, because if you don't, sometimes we run into debt to income ratios because, you know, especially if somebody doesn't know what they're doing and then it's tied on debt to income ratio and then the homeowner insurance is $80 higher, 40 to $80 higher than, than what you normally would expect. Yeah, that can cause issues with your debt to income ratio and then you're scrambling to try to figure out how to resolve that. Okay, so those are critical things that you need to know upfront before you buy a manufactured home. Now, if you are buying a manufactured home, because most people don't do what I just told them to and they're just listed, okay, this is what's going to be looked for. You got to have a HUD plate on the outside. So again, if you're listing, the first thing that you need to do when you're listing a home is go look for the HUD plate. And if it doesn't have it, that means there's a place called IBTS where we got to order it. The other thing is you have to look inside the house for the manufacturer data. It looks like a map of the United States, all right? Normally it's put in a kitchen cabinet, people rip it down and they don't want it there and they're gone. That costs money. Right? If you're listening and you know it's not there, get it ordered. If you are buying it, if you are a buyer's agent and you're taking your buyer through this home, you need to be smart and you need to be looking for these things. Does it have a HUD plate on the outside? Or did they cover it up? If they cover it up, I mean, it happens. People remodel, they grow, they build, and they cover it up with siding. It's gone. Costs money. And most of the time, nobody's negotiating that up front. If you're a buyer you need to, um, and a buyer's agent, you can negotiate because a, a seller can't sell without this stuff. But what I see most of the time, the seller just lists it and then the buyers have to figure out how to do it so it adds to their closing costs. It costs more money. But if you know this ahead of time and you're savvy and you're smart, you can look at that and you can tell the sellers, hey, we're going to have to get a HUD plate uh, replaced and we're going to have to get the manufacturer data inside. We're going to have to get an engineer's report and we're going to have to um, uh, figure out, hey, if there's any issues down there, it's got to be fixed and it has to be converted to a property. All right, so let's talk about money. Converted to real property, 250 to 300 bucks, okay? Uh, engineer's report, 450 to 500 dollars, okay? Uh, talking about uh, converting, I already talked about converting real property. Um, and then, uh, so you got your homeowner insurance that's more expensive. And then uh, the manufacturer data and the HUD plate, okay? Depending on when it happens in, you know, normally it happens late in, in the process. And what you end up doing is having to order on a rush. That could be up to $250. All right. If you get it up front, if you know it up front, it's not that expensive, right? Because it, they can take their time and get it right. These are things that cost a lot of money up front. You're talking on average, at least another thousand dollars to buy a manufactured home on top of the closing costs. Got to know that, right? Does the buyer have that money? right? It's more money than you would normally expect in a regular transaction. So all that stuff is critical to know up front and to add in the closing costs and prepaids. And then can you negotiate the seller to pay some of it? Why not? It's theirs. They can't sell it without it unless it's a cash deal. 
okay? So if you know these things going on up front, one, the listing agent can be prepared for it, two, the buyer agent can be prepared for it, and three, buyer, if you're watching this and you understand how to buy a manufactured home, you can negotiate that up front. But most of the time the buyers get stuck with it because they're trying to buy it and the sellers are just kind of there. And the only thing they're left with is fixing deficiencies. You know, if, if the engineer report says it needs to, you know, the dry stack is an issue or it needs a vapor barrier, it needs, you know, the, the tie downs and they're stuck fixing it. And then they're, they're all up in arms. Oh, how come I have to do that? It's because it doesn't qualify. It doesn't qualify to sell. Know this up front and get it fixed. And if you do all this up front, a manufactured home is like nothing else. It's simple. Check, 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 check the box. Congratulations. You are a homeowner, right? And there's no issues with it. Know these things up front. That manufactured data, you need to be looking around. If you're looking at a manufactured home, go find it. If it's not in a kitchen cabinet, it might be in the back of the master bedroom closet or some other closet, and it might be in the utility room. If you don't find it in any of those places, then you need to ask the listing agent and the sellers, do you have a copy of the manufactured data? If not, they need to get it. Otherwise, the buyers need to be prepared. You're gonna be paying for it. And it might as well be ordered up front because that has to go on the appraisal. If it is not present, the appraiser cannot complete the appraisal, it's subject to completion, and then we gotta wait for it. All of these things take time. And that time is why manufactured homes take a while. And the other thing we find out when we're doing title is I've seen the craziest things. I've seen manufactured homes put on the middle of two different properties and they don't actually own half the, half the home because it's sitting on somebody else's property. You know, I've seen all kinds of craziness with these manufactured homes because oftentimes in their inception, they're put on grandpappy's land and nobody knew the difference. Or, or that's another one. So, hey, grandpappy said I can put my manufactured home on here. I've had it there. I've had it there for 20 plus years but nobody transferred the land. So you own the home, but not the land. And then you go and sell it. That means grandpappy or whoever owns the land now has to actually go on the contract in order for it to be sellable, right? Because they don't own the land that it sits on, right? All of these things are critical to know. All right, uh, that was a lot, but those are the most common things that I run into. And if you address these up front, it'll help make a smooth transaction. I'm a little bit passionate about it, but I deal with so many of these that I just want people to understand. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer them because if I can help anybody buy or sell a manufactured home a little bit smoother, it'll make everybody's lives easier. All right, until next time, it's all for one and one for all.